Good morning. Welcome to Glazing with Amico. I'm Kara. And today I am talking about one of my favorite and most unexpected combinations. So for many years, I made most of the layering cups that you see in Amico's PC Potter's Choice layering ads. And uh, it was always exciting to open the kiln when we had a new batch of cups come out. Sometimes disappointingly exciting, but you know, always interesting. And the day that I opened up the kiln after doing our PC33 iron luster layering, which is a kind of golden green to Sorry. Uh, <laughs> uh, sorry about that. It's a, it's a stop and deliver. Okay. So let me re kind of back up. So uh, doing the the layering cups. The, one of the most interesting combinations when I opened the kiln the day of, of having the PC33 iron luster combinations, I opened up the kiln to find one cup that had this amazing purple color. And this is not the cup. This is a cup I made later. But imagine my surprise when combining a kind of greeny golden glaze and a beige glaze created this purple blue combination. So there we are. So this is PC33 Iron Luster as a base with PC31 oatmeal on top of it. And this mug I made probably about five years ago, maybe four years ago. And it's an excellent example of, of the, the kind of color response that you would get. So this was three coats of Iron Luster and two coats of oatmeal and fired to cone six. The oatmeal was applied in two stripes. I'm going to Sounds switch like over to an overhead. The sound, but maybe they're figuring it out on their end. Hmm. Okay, it's good. It sounds like okay. So there we are. So, um, yay. Okay. So I was really worried and disappointed when a few months ago, a couple of customers were reporting that their normally very reliable iron luster and oatmeal combination was coming out different. Uh, we had not changed the formulation of either glaze. Uh, there had been some material changes, but it was not a formulation change. So why would that be happening? So I tried out uh, a test with new bottles of Iron Luster and uh, oatmeal. And instead of getting kind of the blue to purple, I got a lot of blue, but it was sort of patchy with sort of a brown overlay. And I thought, well, that is not what I expect to see. So I went down a rabbit hole of testing, which I won't, uh, won't take you down all of the testing, but what I found, was very interesting. And so I started doing tests with the combinations of thickness 
and temperature thickness for both the oatmeal and the iron luster. And what I found was that with the newer gum that we use in the oatmeal, that you need less of it to get the purple combination. So in here, this, this is a heavier application of oatmeal, the same amount of iron luster across here, but heavier amounts of oatmeal. And you can see as it gets heavier, it is more brown. And as it is lighter, it is more purple. This is all cone five. So then at cone six, a similar kind of thing happened. So this is two coats of iron luster and just one coat of oatmeal, and it is an amazingly purple combination. So for cone six, so this is the same application, but cone five versus cone six, so you can see you'll get quite a lot of running if you go to cone six. So today I'm going to do some glazing. And I have some more things to show you as I go along, but I'm going to start off with my iron luster. PC33 iron luster. And this is a glaze that I really love just even by itself, it's just a beautiful glaze. Annie was wondering what clay body. So I'm using 11M A mix with all of them. It is a white stoneware. All of the tests were done on the same clay body so that I wouldn't have to worry about that being a uh, variable. And, and this is a mix as well. So this mug is also on the same clay body. So everything that I'm showing you today, every single tile, every mug, they're all the same clay body. Amico's a mix. Sorry, I'm looking, looking to see if I have other comments. There is some on the 5-6. Hmm, I'm not seeing the comments on the 5-6. Can you relay those yeah, to me? Uh, um, Janet said that she's having a hard time with oatmeal um, flaking. Uh, if you have oatmeal that is older, it does, it will sometimes thicken. And uh, I recommend, first off, do not add water unless it is so thick that you cannot get a brush into it. If you are having cracking and flaking, you are probably going to need to use gum solution to get it to stay on. If you're using the oatmeal as a top coat, like I'm using in this demo, uh, cracking, unless it's completely coming off of your wear, cracking is not going to be a problem. It will, uh, it will fire just fine. If you're using the oatmeal as a base coat though, and it's cracking, you probably will have some uh, uh, crawling. So add gum solution and a small amount of water, as little as you can, to uh, get it back to a usable consistency. I do recommend using, uh, if, you, if you're adding any water to it, use that as soon as possible because otherwise it will thicken up again and then you're going to be adding more and more water and making it uh, even though it seems really thick you're actually making it materially thinner 
So um, if it is cracking, use gum solution. And do we have any uh, examples on a red clay body? I don't. I don't have examples of this on a red clay body, but you can see examples of both oatmeal and iron luster on different clay bodies on our website. If you go to amico.com and click the glazes tab, go down to high fire and potter's choice, go to the potter's choice landing page. There's a lot of information, lots of resources on that page. And if you scroll down, we have images of most of the potter's choice glazes on multiple Amico clay bodies, including our 77M, which is a terracotta, a cone five red uh, groggy terracotta, which will give you an idea of what this looks like on a red clay. We don't have the combinations, uh, but the individual, uh, the individual glazes we do. So I also wanted to talk about one of the things that can really affect your uh, iron luster and oatmeal combination is texture. So these two are glazed very similarly, but because of the horizontal texture on this mug, it keeps the glaze from flowing. And so you get a lot of the blue, but not as much of the purple because the oatmeal is here on the striped area. So it's still really beautiful, it's very dramatic, but it's not the bright purple. So have a place where your glaze can flow. Oh, and just like a little extra tidbit, this is Honey Flux with the Iron Luster over it on the inside, one of my favorites. So have some space where the, the oatmeal can flow down. And I do have, on this mug, I have some, some texture that would catch it if it tried to flow all the way down but uh, it didn't, so I was, I was happy with the amount of purple. There's a lot of talk about uh, how it works on texture. On texture, well, that is, uh, that's it on texture. Uh, that's not quite dry. It does really well on certain kinds of texture. You just have to be conscious of how uh, how that texture will affect the uh, uh, glaze flowing. And since this combination needs some movement to get that purple, uh, you want to have more vertical instead of horizontal texture. So I see that a couple people saw me on Clay Share Con last week, and uh, I I'm really glad that you made it over here and that you are interested in seeing what other things I have to show. So this is almost dry. I will, because of the constraints of a live stream, I will go ahead and apply a second coat now. And for those who are not familiar with my glazing methods, you can see that I really mop the glaze on. Uh, if if the brush starts dragging at all, I reload it because I give very generous coats, uh, especially a glaze like Iron Luster needs to have a heavy application to develop the kind of blue to green float in it. And I'll go back and sponge the uh, foot before I fire it. We also had a gum solution question. Mm -hmm. uh, it was like asking the range of how much to add and also does it expire? Uh, gum solution does degrade over time, especially if it gets too hot. Uh, if your gum solution is runny, then it is probably not good anymore. If your gum solution is thick and goopy, then it's fine. So that's one of the things to look for. I'm gonna leave this with two coats. Those are nice, nice juicy coats. So, uh, and the amount of gum solution, our lab says do not add more than a tablespoon 
per pint. So if you have a full pint of, of glaze that you're adding it to, do not add more than a tablespoon and make that proportional as you um, uh, look at your pint. So if, if you have a half of a pint, use half of a tablespoon. And I suggest not adding more water than gum solution. So whatever amount of, of gum solution you add, keep your amount of water that you add underneath that as much as possible. I know that can be tough to do with oatmeal uh, because it does thicken up so much. But here's one of the interesting things is that the new oatmeal, newer batches of oatmeal are extremely fluid. They are not getting thick at all. So, uh, and that is part of what I was saying about the thickness of the glaze. Since, it's, since we changed the gum solution, um, oatmeal is staying more fluid. So you're getting a more glaze material in each coat than you would if you were watering it down. When firing at cone five, do you recommend firing at a slow speed? Uh, I generally fire all of all of my wear to a medium at a medium speed to cone five, but for certain. Uh, glazes for certain effects. I will go to a slow cone five or uh, when refiring glazes. If I'm refiring any glazes, I always fire them slowly to allow that glaze to adjust uh, as it heats up to the clay body. I've had dunting if I refired too fast. And uh, uh, there are a couple glazes that what I'll do is go to a cone lower and then have a long hold, which effectively makes it a very, very slow final ramp sort of process. Uh, but I talk about things like that more on the group. Um, generally, I don't worry too much about firings. There are lots of different firing schedules out there, but... Uh, Everybody fires a little bit different. And you're welcome, Benjamin. So this is still not, not dry enough to apply the oatmeal, but I wanted to show you, for those of you who are familiar with how oatmeal thickens over time, uh, the newer batches of oatmeal are not so thick. They're actually quite fluid. So... You may be surprised, do not glob it on too much, just use, use fewer coats. And if you're used to using oatmeal as a top coat, I do highly, highly recommend you make a test tile to really see uh, if your application needs to be adjusted. So let me see. So this was a combo that I did with uh, uh, an older batch. And you can compare it to the newer batch. And you can actually see how the oatmeal was relatively thin. It was still coming out a little on the yellow side. But uh, uh, it was still more purple. So I definitely found that going to a thinner application of the oatmeal was going to help and be more like the uh, more like the original combination. So Benjamin, you, you say you're using iron luster over frosted turquoise and I don't really have any recommendations. I don't know what that combination looks like. I don't remember that one. Uh, I'm sure that it's on our website. Uh, Frosted turquoise tends to be a really stable glaze. The only thing that will affect it is other glazes can fume it, make it turn yellow, kind of a greenish yellow. So uh, if you don't want it to, to change color, you might want to give it a lot more space, but uh, the iron luster might change it. I don't know. We got two really good questions. How new is the new formula? I have a pint from six months ago, and when you say new oatmeal, like what's that change? 
Uh, the gum solution is the only change to oatmeal, and uh, that happened about a year ago. So six months, if your batch is from six months ago, then it, it would be considered a new gum. So you may be noticing that it's more fluid than what you're used to. Uh, this batch that I have right here is, I think, the newest batch that I have in, in our studio, and it's about three months old. You said there was another question? Those were two different questions. Oh, okay. Same process, two different people. So this is the part where I'm always waiting for glaze to dry. Uh, let me see if I have something else I can show. So you may notice variations, but overall uh, the, the trick is just using a little bit less oatmeal uh, you can use a little bit more of the iron luster. So this combination that I'm doing today with one coat of oatmeal over two coats of iron luster should give me this kind of dark purple with a little bit of white around the edges. Pretty close to, pretty darn close to my original version. Do we have any other questions? Is the CMC gum solution that you sell new as well? No, gum solution is uh, is is not new. It's not a new product, I suppose I should say. You, we have batch codes on them, just like we have on our glazes. But we have been making and selling gum solution for many years as an additive for turning dipping glazes into brushing glazes or to refresh old glazes. I think uh, they're asking if that product had a chemical change. No. Oh, yes. <laughs> we switched to a new gum uh, and it has longer lasting and it does have a, uh, it does have an effect on how the glazes uh, last. Still too wet to add more. I like to I like to wait until it's dry enough for me to handle without it sticking to my fingers. Any other questions for today? So uh, next week I will be here on a Monday. But I think that after that, we may be switching to all Tuesdays. David, you have a question? Should we add the gum solution directly into the bottle? Yes. Yes, the gum solution is liquid, so you can add it directly into the glaze. You do not have to mix it with something else first. there. So when I'm glazing in the studio um, to so that I don't have this time where I'm sitting and staring at my mug waiting for it to dry, uh, what I do is I set up an assembly line of glaze uh, and wear and work my way down the table and by the time I reach the end the first pieces are dry enough to put more glaze on. And I start at back at the beginning and put my next coat on. It's an efficient method for getting a lot of glazing done at once. But it gets kind of confusing for doing a show like this. So, so instead we wait. But in the amount of time that I glaze a mug here in the studio, I would probably have glazed five or six or more. So, uh, and it's also a great time to listen to podcasts or sometimes I'll talk on the speakerphone to someone while I wait for glaze to dry. 
Danny was wondering if you're going to put the oatmeal on just the top third. Yes, that is my plan, is to put it just on the top third and uh, not on the not on the handle either because a lot of times when you put when you layer on handles those handles are just like little highways for the glaze and they just zoom right off and so you'll often notice that your glaze doesn't run anywhere except off of the handle so i'm not going to layer on the handle just on the top one third of the mug means I probably am okay to start putting another coat on, but it's still a little, a little damp on the bottom. Now, of course, again, those of you who know how I glaze, you know that one coat for me is pretty heavy. I will get this into the kiln this week and share it with you in my next video. So there it is, just one coat. Now again, with, with firing, I know that a lot of people do not use cones in their firings, and you can see the difference that a cone makes here let me you can see the difference that a cone makes this is cone five this is cone six and it makes a big difference in the result so uh, if you're not using cones you cannot guarantee what your results are and you you may be getting different results than what you expect. And I realize that computerized kilns are really wonderful. That's what we use here. Uh, but even with a computer, I do find that sometimes they're not perfectly accurate. David, there's another question? Yeah, uh, do you ever speed up the drying with a heat gun? I don't. Uh, I don't have a problem with using them. I just don't use them. But. Uh, I know that some people really like using a heat gun to uh, dry things off. I, I would be a little worried if you're doing a really thick application that your, that your glaze uh, is still wet underneath, but uh, I, don't really, I don't really worry about it. You could certainly use them. Uh, so, that is it for my oatmeal and iron luster talk today. I really appreciate you all coming and uh, uh, joining me for my clay, my glaze adventures. I'm sorry, all of a sudden a bunch of comments showed up, but they're things that David already asked. So I will see you all next week. In the meantime, Happy glazing.